The clinical benefit of ion chelation is largely based on retrospective data, um, registry studies and other retrospective studies have shown survival benefit for patients who are chelated and uh, there are uh, retrospective data showing um, leukemic transformation is delayed in patients who are chelated. So that could be a major clinical benefit if, it's been sh if it is proven in pros future prospective studies. The other benefit is improvement in hematopoiesis, which can occur in a minority of patients with MDS. Um, they can have a uh, decrease in red cell transfusion dependence as well as improvement in other counts. The effects on comorbidities like uh, cardiac dysfunction or endocrine dysfunction, those are more difficult to prove without very systematic uh, prospective studies. Um, so overall, I think uh, the most important benefit potentially will be uh, improved survival and delayed leukemic transformation. I have seen uh, improvement in hematopoiesis sometimes to the point where they become transfusion independent uh, on uh, deferacerox, and that has now been reported in not just in MDS but in other bone marrow failure conditions like aplastic anemia. So that is real and that does occur, and that has major impact on the patient's quality of life as well as their long-term outcome. In MDS patients, uh, regardless of which treatment we use, we always take into account quality of life. Um, in Canada, treatment from distance from the treatment center is a very important consideration and um, how that will impact on their quality of life. And you have to balance the adverse impact of MDS on the quality of life with the potential adverse or positive effects on quality of life of the treatments that are being considered. So in the case of a patient who becomes transfusion independent with treatment, whether it's iron chelation therapy or another treatment, it's very clear to everyone what the impact of the quality of life is on that patient. In patients with iron overload who don't achieve transfusion independent, that favorable impact on um, iron overload may not be as obvious because they may not have symptoms until there is significant organ damage. So we have to factor in a possible adverse impact of um, side effects of the chelators or other agents against an adverse effect on quality of life if they develop arrhythmias and congestive heart failure, for example, which I have seen in patients that I've inherited once their iron overload is out of control. I think the best and most dramatic example is for patients who do become transfusion independent with iron chelation therapy. I had a gentleman early in my practice who I inherited seven years into his diagnosis of lower risk MDS he, when he became transfusion dependent. He was requiring three red blood cell units every four weeks and had really a very poor quality of life in between transfusions as he became more anemic. He would become more weak and short of breath and described himself as a couch potato. Um, and he really wanted to have his transfusions moved to a shorter interval, but his GP who was managing them did not want to do that because he knew about iron overload. So as his ferritin level went up, I offered him iron chelation therapy with deferoxamine, which was the option in Canada at the time, and he declined, feeling it would impact further on his quality of life. When deferacerox became available on clinical trial, he reluctantly agreed to try it, and within six weeks of starting iron chelation therapy, he received his last transfusion, his hemoglobin improved, it normalized over the coming weeks, it stayed normal for several years until he died in his late 80s of unrelated causes. So he was a very happy camper. He went from couch potato to out, you know, building things and gardening and hunting with his friends and kind of became the poster boy for iron chelation therapy. He went from someone who did not want to take medications case closed to as his ferritin came down, you know, I said to him, we may need to stop this medication so I don't make you iron deficient. And he flatly refused because he was absolutely convinced that it had certainly impacted on his quality of life and also felt that it may have impacted on his survival as well and I have to agree with him. We also had a second patient, a patient of one of my colleagues, who not only became transfusion independent with iron chelation therapy, but at this point she was not on clinical trial, she was through our 
provincial reimbursement. And so one of the criteria for approval for Deferacerox is that the patient is transfusion dependent. And so she became transfusion independent when her annual renewal came up, the um, approval was declined because she was no longer transfusion dependent. Despite that, she remained transfusion independent for two years following stopping iron chelation therapy, which she couldn't afford on her own. And so, you know, I think that the mechanism of this effect is still investigational, but clearly the iron reduction is doing something to the biology of this disease, at least in some patients, that is impacting favorably on their anemia.